course, Dr. Chavez, for joining us today for our Future Teachers Network Teacher Talk series. I have a, a few different questions for you today, so whenever you're ready, we're going to go ahead and get started. Great. Whenever you're ready. Perfect. Could you take some time and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit more. <clears throat> yes. So my name is Sergio Cuauhtémoc Chavez, and I'm currently the director of English Learner Programs and Student Achievement for the Santa Ana Unified School District in Orange County. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. I'm also from that area, so very close to my heart. Happy to have oh, okay. you out there. <laughs> Great. So could you tell us a little bit about your educational journey? Um, what happened with college and how'd you end up at the school you're at now or district? Well, originally I was a pre-med student. I, I have a degree in biology from UCSD. Um, but that did not necessarily pan out, right? Life happens. And so I ended up moving to the LA area and I started teaching uh, in Pomona Unified. Um, and I never looked back. I mean, it, it was very, very much of a calling that I never knew that I had, right? So, and sometimes you discover your callings, even though it might not be your first calling, right? Mm -hmm. And so that took me from Pomona to Fontana. I also worked for LA County Office of Education in the juvenile court schools. And I've taught every grade level, just about elementary, middle, high school, alternative ed, adult ed, juvenile court schools. Uh, I've been an admin at the elementary and the secondary level. And, and now I'm here. That's amazing. Wow. You've had such... An interesting journey. Wow. Yes. So took you from, why did you decide to move, make that transition from teaching to being more of an administrative role? Like how did that whole journey? I got, I got tired of complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I got tired of complaining and, and I wanted to see change happen. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of change. There's a lot of great things happening in schools, granted, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of room for growth. And mm -hmm. so Mm, I decided to take that step and try to impact change as best I could. And that in itself has been a long journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm a teacher first mm -hmm. and, and I still teach. I teach at Cal Poly Pomona for mm -hmm. the admin program. So I have a class tonight, as a matter of fact. So I, I still teach. So I never let go of the teaching part. Mm -hmm. It's just expanded now to increase your sphere of influence. That's yeah. the um, yes. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, teacher at heart, <laughs> no matter what role life takes you in. <laughs> yes. Always, always teaching. It's in your blood, I can tell. Well, thank um, you. So, yeah. So what would you say is the most rewarding part about each of those roles, being a teacher and then later administrative work? It's all about the kids. Mm -hmm. It's impacting children. Yeah. Educating children. It's giving children a voice. It's advocating for children. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all of the above, right? Uh, yeah. Education is a human right. And so sometimes we have to put on our advocacy hat mm -hmm. to advocate for them. But um, for the most part, the main thing is just to let kids be kids and, and let them grow up with a sense of worth mm -hmm. and, and grow up with a sense of service so that this becomes cyclical, right? Because <clears throat> I'm not going to be a teacher forever, right? And so we want to make sure that there's future generations that continue what Martin Luther King referred to, that beautiful struggle, right? Uh, until we can one day eradicate poverty. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's the biggest factor that negatively impacts the education of all kids, right? So, Yeah, there's something very noble about that, being an advocate for those who... Yes voice for the youngest of us yeah exactly to take seriously it is such an honor yeah um on the flip side then what would you say is the most challenging part about those individual roles the most challenging is the system itself mm -hmm. you know especially when you feel that you get the pushback yeah uh when you have to face um deficit thinking which you may have covered in your courses yeah. it, it's it's that deficit thinking uh sense of i don't know privilege 
to a large degree, yeah. how you have a system of the haves and the have nots mm -hmm. and, and breaking that can be sometimes extremely challenging, mm -hmm. but it's never the kids. So yeah. I just want to make that clear. It's never the kids. And so if you have a deep passion for children mm -hmm. and a, a deep love for life, then you need to be a teacher because at the end of the day, everybody, including past and present and future presidents would never be where they're at without a teacher. So you true. Know? Yeah. So it, it, you, the role that you play when you get into that position mm -hmm. is critical. It's critical. And so you have to go in in a good way, right? With an open heart and open mind, you'll make a lot of mistakes and you know what? It's okay. But yeah. you dust yourself up and you keep going. And just be candid, transparent, and sincere with your students. And they'll follow you anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm old enough to tell you <laughs> that the kids do come back. They do come back. And you don't see it your first 10 years of teaching, but they come back. And, and that's what makes it all worthwhile. There's no trophy. There's no medal. There's no plaque that can replace a student coming back to you years later mm -hmm. and say, thank you for believing in me when no one else would. There's nothing more powerful than that. Yeah, it really is such a rewarding career. Yeah, yes. yeah, it is. It's not, it's not the pay. <laughs> it's no. not the pay, but there's, there's, yeah. there's, there's more to life than just money, right? Yeah. Impacting lives and creating a better future is always uh, very rewarding. Yeah. For sure, for sure. That's such a great perspective to share. Thanks for elaborating on that. I know that's really valuable stuff. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit more about maybe your experiences working with different school districts like Fontana, Santa Ana, the LA USD, um, LA school district? Um, what were the different uh, strengths and challenges with each of those? Um, well, they all had both, yes, granted. So they were all very similar in the sense that the system is the same across the board. Mm -hmm. You had similar challenges, right? Dealing with personalities and perspectives and mindsets, right? Mm -hmm. uh, wanting to impact change. Um, but some districts were slightly organized differently. So for example, uh, Pomona has a history of having longstanding uh, administration. Mm -hmm. So the superintendent has been there many years. He's excellent. Mm -hmm. And one of the positive things there is you have uh, what is called stability. So you, you have a very stable district. Yeah. So with challenges like everything else, but very stable. Mm -hmm. Then you have other districts uh, that a lot of times are in flux mm -hmm. because they have a constant changing of leadership at the top superintendents you know rotate in and out and it's very hard to gain traction mm -hmm. but at all of the three districts there's amazing individuals mm -hmm. that are trying to make as we say in the business lemonade right out of lemons and just making sure that we keep whatever is going on that might not be so positive as far away from the kids as possible mm -hmm. yes yeah really keeping those students first yeah there's yeah. a lot of different roads to it but um Yes. Being the kids at heart is really. And, and, and you know what? It's good you ask that question because even you, when you eventually apply for teaching, mm -hmm. uh, when you go through the interview process, you're, they're interviewing you, but you're also interviewing them. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you want to make sure that it's a match. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Is, is the district a match for me? Is yeah. this population a match for me? You know, I, notice I didn't say, will it be challenging? Because all teaching is challenging. There's a bit misconception that teaching is not a, a difficult profession. It is. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. um, so the challenge part is universal, mm -hmm. but it's just an issue of making sure that it's a match. Because when it's not a match, then the teacher's not happy. And by consequently, the kids won't be happy. Yeah. And no, nobody wins, right? So Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a family in education and they will attest to that. Yeah, fitting with a good district really makes a difference. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Right, but they're all run a little differently and there's pros and cons to 
more stability, more flexibility. Um, but yeah, finding what works for you as a teacher, I think that's something that a lot of times uh, applicants don't consider. So thanks for your perspective. Yeah, because there is pros and cons to both. So in districts where there's a lot of flux, mm -hmm. sometimes there's room for creativity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And when it's sometimes when it's very established, mm, it could stump creativity a bit. Yeah. Right. Because the whole mantra of, oh, we've always done it this way is very prevalent. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Pros and cons. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's shift gears a little bit. What inspired you to, um, to pursue a career helping ELL students and bilingual students? Well, I myself am an English learner. Mm -hmm. Right. And my goal was always i've always gone for the underdog even in sports yeah that's why a lot of my teams don't win championships but it is it, it's, it's just that that um that calling mm -hmm. right you you want to render yourself uh useful to the most marginalized yeah you know because if they rise if they come up everybody wins yeah as opposed to leaving kids behind right so yeah. we just came out of an era of what they call nickelby or no child left behind and yet so many children were left behind right yeah. so you go to just about any school district and there are three major demographics that can be quote unquote extra challenging mm -hmm. one is your english learner population the other is your african-american students and third is your special education students mm -hmm. right at least that's what's seen at the surface level mm -hmm. among the three groups there are amazing individuals and all children are brilliant yeah. but you know in, in in making sure and so i always wanted to be in that company mm -hmm. you know, trying to make the most change yeah yeah you definitely have a big opportunity to make an impact with those populations yeah i know that's where i feel called to just to to help the least of these and really make a big impact like that. It's really yes. mm -hmm. your character. I think that's amazing. And, and it's important to keep in mind that when we go into these marginalized communities, mm -hmm. that we have a deep understanding of empathy, not sympathy. Yeah. Um, there is a difference. And then two, that we understand that our, our babies do not need fixing. Yeah. What they need is an education. Yes. So we're there to empathize, to be in solidarity, to be an ally. Even if we did not face that experience growing up, yeah. you know what I mean? There's that old saying in the neighborhood that says we don't have to lie to kick it, right? So we can just be forthright and to be transparent and say, you know what? I don't quite understand firsthand what you may be going through or the obstacles you're facing, but I want you to know that I'm here with you every step of the way to support you does yeah. that make sense yeah sure for sure yeah it really harkens back to me for the the asset base uh approach that we yes. talked about rather than a deficit based approach yes 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 yes, yes. Yeah. i'm glad i'm glad you're aware of that yeah we need, we need more teachers like you oh thank you i hope so i hope i everyone's as passionate as i am <laughs> Um, so let's see, what's up next? Um, how do you ensure that all your students feel equally important and represented in the classroom? This could be learning styles, cultural backgrounds, different struggles, personalities. Yeah, well, at both as a teacher and as an admin, I would, as an admin, I would give grace to my teachers to take the first week of school and if needed longer, longer. Mm -hmm to put the curriculum on hold and just build relationships yeah get to know the children get to know them by name get to know what their backgrounds are value them right yeah. and 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 see them that's critical mm -hmm. that's the key word uh the issue is respect mm -hmm. and if you look at the word and you look at the linguistic background re means again and spec comes from facete, which means to look. Mm -hmm. So respect is to look again. Mm -hmm. And our children that are most mar marginalized need to be seen again. Because the first time we tend to look at children 
through the lens of all the stereotypes that are out there, all the biases and the like. Mm. It's not until we look again that we look at their humanity. Mm. And children have a very astute meter where they can measure whether or not we're being respectful. Mm -hmm. So you establish that respect, you establish those relationships, you let them know that your classroom is a safe space for mm -hmm. them to be them, and that you accept them as they come. Mm -hmm. That's very critical, that they know that you accept them as they come. Mm -hmm. And you know what, the rest will come. Because see, we're wired, our DNA is wired to learn, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. You can put a child in the middle of somewhere, not that you would, right? Because then they'll call CPS, but I'm just speaking figuratively speaking. Mm -hmm. You can put them out there anywhere and they'll learn from their environment. Yeah. Right? Just as a natural process of growing. Mm -hmm. So then what we do is we control the environment mm -hmm. to make sure that that environment is nurturing, to make sure that environment is welcoming, to ensure that that environment is purposeful. What does that mean? That means that just because we, deficit thinking has a, a sweet side to it, believe it or not, it's called the pobrecito syndrome, the all oh, poor kids, yeah. you know, so you can also uh, enable students mm -hmm. to fail through a lot of love. Mm -hmm. So we have to redefine love, right? Yeah. It, it's a different kind of love. It's an organic one where I care about you so much that I'm going to burn my eyelashes, figuratively speaking again, yeah. to prep and to prepare my lessons mm -hmm. in order to provide you the highest rigor and well-prepared lessons, mm -hmm. right? With differentiation and scaffolding that is needed in an environment that is caring and is accepting of all students. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised what you'll get as a result. Yeah. That is powerful stuff. Wow. Thanks for sharing all that wisdom. That's amazing. You covered it from practical to all the way up to theory based. That's amazing. Thank you for that answer. Um, uh, along those lines, um, how does your school district support Latinx and other minority students bridge that gap in between high school and college? Well, it's important to have a vertical alignment. Mm -hmm to have what it calls an MOU, a memo of understanding. So here we're trying to create a pseudo K-14 model, right? Where the students come up through the grades and they continue on to the junior college yeah. uh, as a base, not all of them. There are kids that can go straight to a four year. By no means am I saying they can't, but at least you have a base and you establish a premise that all kids are going to college. Now, granted, as they get older, right? When they get uh, to your age or younger, they'll make up their own mind, mm -hmm. whether they want to go down vocational route or join the armed forces or whatever. Mm -hmm. but my argument is that when children are in kinder or first grade, who are we to determine or predetermine their destiny. Yeah. Right? So my position has always been as a teacher, as an admin, especially in the younger grades, is don't worry about, oh, there are other pathways. Mm -hmm. Prepare them for college. And then if they choose otherwise, then it's on them. Mm -hmm. But when we do not close the opportunity gap, mm -hmm. which is something that's very prevalent in schools that are struggling, then it's on us mm -hmm. because we did not allow them the opportunity. And I don't want that on my conscience. Yeah. And real educators should not have that on theirs as well. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Providing all those opportunities and very specific pathways to help students out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there, there is something that happens in education. There's a term in education that if you have a chance to dig deeper, you may already be familiar. It's called gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset mm -hmm. where some teachers take it upon themselves to be gatekeepers and determine which kids move forward and which ones do not. Yeah. And I humbly argue against that. We're in no position 
to mm -hmm. play that God complex of being gatekeepers and predetermining mm -hmm. uh, the future of kids, mm -hmm. right? Especially when you see from 30 feet above ground, you start seeing patterns. Yeah. Where certain groups tend to be railroaded to vocational, while others without question are tracked to go on to four year and beyond. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. It does. Yeah. Our um, labels and expectations for students are powerful. Mm -hmm. They really are. And the power of a teacher cuts both ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it can either make or break, right? Yeah. And so there's that mantra in education that says that if we're not part of the solution, then more than likely we might be part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of the things that I ask my teachers, and I know this might take it a little bit off road, but it, I think it's important for future teachers to understand. Yeah. You want to ask yourself this question. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? You yeah. don't have to, you don't have to answer me right now. It's a hypothetical question. It's a reflection question. Okay. Fine. And the question is the following at the end of each day, you ask yourself two separate questions. The first one is, did any of my actions or words hurt children? Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, even if you may have upset some adults, then you had a good day. Mm -hmm. But if it did hurt children, then we need to really reflect, like, what can I do different tomorrow? Yeah. And the, and the second question is even more perplexing. Are you ready? Bye. The second question is, if my students could choose any teacher under the sun of their choice mm -hmm. would they choose me yeah. powerful huh because yeah. if the answer is yes right on if the answer is no then we have to start digging deeper within ourselves yeah remember remember the adult sets the tone mm -hmm. for the classroom not the kids kids are kids mm -hmm. So if there's a climate or culture issue at the school, you start with the adults. Because mm. kids are just being kids. Children will just do as they see and as they feel, right? So, yeah. Exactly. Those are so great. Oh, my gosh. Including that regular reflection, I think, is really powerful. Reflect, yes. Reflective practice is critical. Yeah. That and the other one is self-efficacy. Yeah. Does that, what does that mean? Well, that is interpreted in classrooms as being lifelong learners. Mm. So educate. I'm still a lifelong learner. Yeah. You know, I, I know I look a day over 28, but I'm not. <laughs> but I'm still a lifelong learner. I'm still yeah. reading. I'm still researching because mm. you know what? I want to be the best. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Not because I want a parade or I want a plaque on the wall, but because simply and quite frankly, our children deserve the best. You want to be the best for them. Yeah. Exactly. At yeah. the end of the day, that's who we're here to serve. Yeah. Especially when the children are not ours biologically, we have more of a moral imperative Yeah. to do even more so. Mm -hmm. That's pretty deep stuff. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm really glad you're asking such good questions. You're doing a wonderful job. And, and because these are messages mm -hmm. that, a lot of times are not spoken very much, even in teacher prep courses. Yeah. We get caught up with the mundane, right? With, which is not important. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are certain things that you do above what, uh, the green line and things you do below the green line. There's yeah. a mysterious green line. Mm -hmm. Above the green line is structure, lesson plans, uh, bell schedule, master schedule, um, going through all of the rote uh, things that you have to go with students, routines and procedures that are very important in class. Mm -hmm. But we have to begin with below the green line, the building of relationships, mm -hmm. of having candid, open and empathetic communication with students mm -hmm. and with helping our children to self-identify and, and climb Okay, climb the ladder of Maslow's pyramid of needs. Yeah. Because it has to be an issue of Maslow before Bloom's. Yeah. You can't get to Bloom's taxonomy yeah. until children have reached that top level 
of self-actualization, which is the pinnacle of Maslow's pyramid. So they can get out of that survival mode. They can't. Yes. And, 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 and the more teachers can understand that, mm -hmm. uh, that we have to work. I'm not saying that we're going to feed everybody because, you know, we're on a limited teacher's budget. But at the very minimum, see it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. Feel it. Yes. And, and be proximal mm -hmm. to the pain because a lot of our babies are in pain, mm -hmm. right? The pain of hunger, the pain of injustice, the pain of systemic racism. Yeah. And, and sometimes their only outlet aside from their parents and their family are their teachers. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if a lot of our babies who are in pain are surrounded by a plethora of caring adults? Mm -hmm. There's no telling what that child can do. Exactly. Right. Especially coming out of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of our babies are going through some very serious social, emotional issues, right? Mm -hmm. Have had deaths in the family and the like, have parents who have lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. that's why empathy is so critical. Not sympathy. Sympathy sounds nice, but what sympathy really says is, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm not you. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. But empathy says, you know what? I'm going to try to walk in your shoes. And that's why when I hire teachers, I don't necessarily focus on ethnicity, even though research says that it's really good for children to see a lot of adults that look like them. I get it. Mm -hmm. What I look for is the heart. Mm -hmm. I want people that are human mm -hmm. and can understand that education is a human right and yeah. that they themselves are working diligently Mm -hmm. to rehumanize our children mm -hmm. you do that oh my god sky's the limit you know what i mean because yeah. children are really smart they know that we didn't grow up like they did they get it they even know that we don't speak spanish for using that as an example they mm -hmm. get it i've had students that are chinese mm -hmm. right i don't speak mandarin but i went and i found the word she -she, which means thank you Mm -hmm. And when I met with the family, I looked ridiculous, but I was all oh, sheshe, sheshe. We both laughed, but you know what? We made a human connection. Mm -hmm. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's what it's about making human connections. Totally. Yeah. I was just, this is a side note, but I was just reading a quote by Nelson Mandela, and it was uh, speak to a man uh, in, in a language he understands, and you'll connect with his mind, but speak to him in a language. Uh, that he, uh, his first language, and you'll speak to his heart. So mm -hmm. it's really making those connections. And even if it's not your own experience, uh, humbling yourself, putting in that work, that driving that empathy to really make those connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Nelson also said that education is the most powerful tool yeah. to change the world. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm such a believer in teachers. Mm -hmm. And I get such a good vibe from you via Zoom that I know you're going to be an amazing teacher. Uh, and you're going you're gonna to impact lives like there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. oh. and there's nothing more satisfying. When you get to that third age and you're sitting on the rocking chair, well, I don't even know if we'll have rocking chairs then. You're rather young. But <laughs> then, then you'll be able to look back and say, okay, you know what? I had a good life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, in this world, there's two kinds of people. There's givers and takers. Mm -hmm. And teachers, by nature, are givers. Mm -hmm. Right? So, good. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Chavez. I really appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. Your wisdom is just through the roof. Oh, my gosh. I'm learning so much. I know everyone back home is learning amazing stuff, too. Um, yeah, I think we can... Uh, end on this question how about this um what advice would you give to someone who's pursuing a career in the educational field what can they expect number one um build your cultural proficiency of the population that you'll be working with mm -hmm. that's first because children want to be seen first okay. obviously don't get me wrong know the standards right no mm -hmm. no whatever the standards are for your state here in california are the California standards for the teaching profession. Get to know what the standards are, all of those things. Be well-equipped. Mm -hmm. But before you develop your mind, 
as a teacher, grow your heart. Mm. Because as long as you lead with your heart, okay, mm. you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Yeah. Mm. As yeah. a hiring practice, I'd rather take and hire a teacher that has the will, but might be lacking the skill mm -hmm. than hiring a teacher that is off the chain with the skills, but has no will. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. I like that. The will over the skill. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Really speaking to uh, the heart of it, the really yes. what drives you, because that'll keep, get you up every morning when you have that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah, and, and you're gonna be tired. Mm -hmm. Okay, just know that. And this goes out to all the future teachers. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be exhausted. Mm -hmm. But as long as you lead with your heart, you're gonna sleep well with a clean conscience. Yeah. You hurt no child. And the next morning, you're gonna wake up so energized that you're gonna be to right back at it mm -hmm. and do it again, over and over again. Yeah. Right. Impacting lives each day. Each exactly. Night. Like a good teacher should. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Chavez. I know. Thank you for uh, having me. So, so much. I know everyone back home did, and we really look forward to collaborating more with you in the future. Thank you so much. Of course. Of course. You have a blessed day.